NVIDIA just revealed their next-gen architecture. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap. If you're looking for a better alternative to eBay with lower fees and better protection, make sure to check out RGB Swap linked in the description below. Well, Ampere might as well bend over and kiss its booty hole goodbye because NVIDIA just revealed their next-generation architecture. And guys, this tells us a lot of information of what the NVIDIA Lovelace RTX 40 series GPUs are going to look like. So it's some really exciting stuff. I cannot wait to get into it. But before we get into the architecture itself, let's first go ahead and take a look at everything that we know about the RTX 4090 Ti or Titan or whatever they decide to call it. And then we'll get right into it so we can get an idea of the exact specs of what the RTX 4090 Ti could eventually look like. So everything that we know about the RTX 4090 Ti so far, which by the way, I'm going to go ahead and put this entire chart showing everything from the RTX 4050 all the way to the RTX 4090 over on the screen here. However, we are going to be focusing in on the RTX 4090 Ti here as this is going to be NVIDIA's flagship GPU and what most people are going to be most excited for, despite the fact that it's probably going to be very, very expensive and not a whole lot of people are going to buy it. It's just always exciting to see what the fastest can actually do. So taking a look here, it's going to be produced on the 8102 die. We know that for sure. And by the way, a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about today is basically confirmed. Now, there's going to be some stuff that could change, obviously, like the you know final pricing, the final name of the GPU, as well as the final performance could definitely change. But a lot of the stuff in this chart here is actually basically confirmed as it was acquired through a huge data leak over at NVIDIA. So yeah, it's going to be on the 8102 die. It's likely going to be around $2,000 plus dollars. It's going to have an SM count of 144, which means that it's going to have 18,432 CUDA cores on the biggest die they can produce, which is absolutely massive as we do have to consider that the current biggest GPU only has a little over 10,000. So this is actually over a 70% increase. Absolutely insane. Now in terms of the boost clock, I am expecting 2.4 gigahertz or even higher out of this GPU and it is also going to sport 24 gigabytes of G6X plus at a minimum on a 384 bit bus with 96 megabytes of cache which is just an absolutely exponential increase over the current RTX 3090 and in terms of performance it's going to be at least probably around 90% faster than the RTX 3090 although there is talk of it being around 2x or even possibly over 2x as fast as the RTX 3090 so as you can see here from the specs that we know so far about the RTX 4090 Ti or Titan or whatever, it's going to be an absolute monster. It's disgusting, it's ridiculous, and it's going to be possibly the biggest jump that we have ever seen in terms of graphics outside of the RX 7000 series, which could be an even bigger jump. So yeah, the next generation of cards is looking absolutely insane, but there's one thing that we don't know 100% for sure at this point, and that's the power draw as well as some other little architectural things when it comes to the RTX 40 Lovelace series of GPU. Now, there have been some talk about like 500 watt GPUs 600 watt GPUs and even 800 watt GPUs when it comes to the next generation flagship GPU that Nvidia is going to be producing. Now 800 watts I always thought is probably pushing it just a little bit too far especially if they're going to be air cooling this card that's just going to get to a point where it's just a little bit too ridiculous and your power bill is going to be way way too high. Now 500 and 600 watts I always thought wasn't too far out of the question and if we go ahead and we take a look at what Nvidia revealed about their next generation architecture just the other day here I think it does actually give us an idea of what the power draw of this card could potentially be and yes it's definitely going up. So the GPU in question that we're going to be talking about today is the GH100 and it is a data center GPU. However, it is based on Nvidia's next generation Hopper architecture. Now Hopper is a little bit different than Lovelace. So do keep in mind that there are going to be some differences between the Hopper architecture and the Lovelace architecture. However, much like it has been in the past, I do suspect that these two architectures are going to be very similar in certain aspects. So if we go ahead and we take a look at the architecture itself on this GPU, we can see that this GPU has a around 80 billion transistors based off of the GH100 GPU. Now, the previous GPU that this is going to be replacing is the GA100, and this one only had 54.2 billion transistors, which was also a massive increase over the Tesla V100, which had 21.1 billion transistors. Now, do keep in mind that the RTX 3090, which is based off of the same Ampere architecture as the GA100, or at least similar architecture, actually has only around 28.3 billion transistors. So as you can see, typically, 
their top end data center GPU does have a little bit more transistors and it is going to be a lot more powerful when it comes to certain applications that are going to be heavily used in the data center. So if we do keep that in mind, taking a look at the 80 billion transistors on the GH100, I actually wouldn't be too surprised if we do end up seeing a GPU coming out from Nvidia that's going to be around 60 billion transistors in terms of like an RTX 4090 Ti or Titan. So if we keep that in mind, comparing that to the current RTX 3090, what we can tell here is that, yeah, the next generation flagship GPU that's going to be based off of the Lovelace architecture is probably going to be around double the transistor density as the current RTX 3090, and that does lend even more credence to that GPU possibly being up to two times as powerful as the RTX 3090. So some really exciting stuff there, and this is definitely revealing some stuff behind the curtain. Now, moving on to the next interesting bit of information here, we can see that it's actually being fabricated on the TSMC N4 node, which is actually very interesting because I think a lot of people were actually expecting to see this on the TSMC N5 node. So yeah, that's actually a little bit better than we were originally expecting. However, this doesn't necessarily confirm that we're going to be seeing Lovelace on the N4 node. In fact, it doesn't even confirm that we're going to be seeing Lovelace on the TSMC 5 nanometer node. However, that also being said, I do think we have to keep in mind that in some of the data breach stuff and leaks that's been going out, it does sound very, very likely that the NVIDIA Lovelace GPUs such as the RTX 4080 and 4090 will be produced on the TSMC 5 nanometer node. And honestly, this makes a whole lot of sense because if they're going for 60 billion transistors, I think they probably are going to have to go for something like the N5 node over at TSMC if they want to make a GPU that's going to be that transistor dense. And again, that is, of course, going to allow them to get a massive improvement in terms of performance as they go ahead and increase that transistor density. But now let's go ahead and move on to the next interesting bit of information about the Hopper architecture, and that's that it's going to apparently have up to 132 GPU clusters for up to 16,896 CUDA cores, which if we do keep that in mind and we take a look at the RTX 4090 Ti, that thing's going to have over 18,000 CUDA cores, so that kind of also lines up as well if these are going to be fairly similar architectures. Now moving on to the L2 cache, this one's also very interesting. Apparently it's going to have up to 50 megabytes of L2 cache, although we are expecting 96 on the RTX 4090. In terms of tensor cores, it is going up to 528, whereas on the GA100 it only had 432. It's going to have the same 5,120 bit bus that we saw on the GA100, uh, this time with 80 gigabytes of HBM3 or HBM2E. So of course, we're not going to be seeing Lovelace using HBM. It's going to be using GDDR6X Plus or uh, some sort of G6X variant like that, potentially G7, although there is some rumors suggesting that it's possibly not going to be G7 as that might not be ready in time. Now, moving on to the TDP, and here's where things get very, very interesting, guys, because apparently this thing is going to draw up to 700 watts. Yes, you heard me correctly. There's going to be a 700 watt variant of the GH100. Now, there is also going to be a PCIe 5 version of this card that's going to be 350 watts, but 700 watts is absolutely ludicrous. And if we take a look at the GA100 that precedes it, this thing only drew up to 400 watts. So yes, they're going up in terms of power definitely very, very significantly. And this is likely in response to what they know about AMD's upcoming GPUs as well, because we do know that AMD's next generation GPUs are not only going to be a massive increase in terms of performance, but also performance per watt. So unfortunately, it looks like Nvidia is probably going to be a little bit behind in terms of performance per watt, but are they going to be behind in terms of performance? Because it looks like they are definitely pushing that power envelope as far as they possibly can to try and get as close to AMD's next generation GPUs as they can. And this definitely also tells me that yes, Lovelace is going to be going up in terms of power very, very significantly. But how significantly? Well, if we take a look at 700 watts versus 400 watts, that's an increase of 300 watts in power. Now on the desktop, are we going for 700 watts? I don't think so. However, this definitely does, for me at least, semi-confirm that there is in the works plans for a 500 watt GPU at the very minimum, possibly even a 600 watt GPU. So guys, yes, don't be too surprised if the 4090 Ti comes in at 600 watts. In fact, if we go ahead and we take a look at this chart again, honestly guys, if you take a look at say like the RTX 4080 Ti, I wouldn't be too surprised if you see that thing drawing like 450 watts, the 4090 at 500 watts, and then the 4090 Ti at 600 watts. That definitely wouldn't surprise me whatsoever as the 4090 Ti is going to be pushed as hard as humanly possible to get as close to the 7950 XT as they possibly can. As it's going to be a very close battle between these two GPUs, it's all going to come down to final drivers, uh, the scaling that they're going to get out of the 7950 XT, and the final clock speeds that Nvidia can get out of their RTX 4090 Ti. So yeah, that's definitely some really interesting stuff here. It's also going to be on PCIe Gen 5 for the GH100, which I do believe is also going to translate to the Lovelace 
place architecture, so you're likely going to see Gen 5 as well. In terms of the launch of the GH100, we're talking about 2022. If you don't know, the launch date for the RTX 4090 Ti or 4090 or whatever comes out first is probably going to be revealed around September, and then shortly thereafter, there will be availability to buy it, assuming that they're going to have ample supply, which by the way, if you're worried about supply, I actually am expecting the next generation of GPUs to have much better supply than the RTX 30 series on its launch. However, just like every single other launch that we have ever seen out of any CPU or GPU, the first couple weeks at a very minimum are going to be difficult to get these cards at their MSRP. So keep that in mind. But yeah, I think honestly, taking a look at the GH100 as a whole, it gives us a lot of information about Lovelace. It confirms a lot of stuff. And overall, yeah, the RTX 4090 Ti or whatever they end up calling it is looking to be an absolute monster. I'm expecting some sort of like 60 billion transistor 2x performance monster with a ton of memory and a ton of power draw. So if you're someone who's sitting there and you only have a 750 watt power supply, God help you. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think the final specs for the 4090 Ti are really going to look like? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.